Port Clinton, home to the Port Clinton Hotel, served as a stagecoach stop between Sunbury and Philadelphia in the early 1800s. The Port Clinton Hotel was a great social center where news from other states and even foreign countries was exchanged. In fact, it became customary when signing the hotel register to add any news that one thought might be of common interest. The Schuylkill Canal was an important transportation link. The last boat to leave Port Clinton's once crowded basin was the Mary Rose, which took a load of coal to the state sanatorium at Hamburg just before the outbreak of World War II in 1939. The railroad became the dominant form of transportation in Port Clinton from the mid-1800s on. Port Clinton is located 78 miles north of Philadelphia on the former Reading Company main line. Today, Port Clinton is an important crossroads on Route 61 just north of Interstate 78.
when I told you there was a lot of real fans that do this trip, I met it.
Scoville Road in the remote community of Hecla.
Here's to the right of the team at a location known as Zaners. Due to the wide open field of view, this is another popular place for photographers. The spur track to the right serves Mauer and Scott.
running track diverged to the east. Watch to your left for the old QA Telegraph office of the Reading Company, which dates back to the 1880s. The odd shape of the building is due to its location inside a Y track that once existed here to connect to Maqua and Pottsville. Just across Broad Street is the former Reading Company to Maqua passenger station built in 1874. The structure barely escaped demolition several times since passenger service was discontinued by the Reading Company in 1961. In 2004, the Tamaqua Save Our Station Group proudly completed a one and a half million dollar renovation of the building. The beautifully restored station now houses a restaurant, ice cream parlor, gift shops, and a visitor center.
these roads looking familiar? Any of these roads looking familiar? No, the front of through the mountain in 1854. As you might guess, we will cross the Little Scribble River once again as soon as we emerge from the tunnel. Thank you. 
between block and block. Mahanoy Junction, our branch to Mount Carmel, diverges from the main line. 
Go carefully between the two tracks for the brick base of the old wooden water tank that once stood here, as well as the former Reading Company passenger station, our residence. Think of how much your father would have loved this tour. two junctions, first Hawks, then Carbon, post connecting tracks that lead to our line to Hazelton. Thank you. 
materials plan is on the left side of the train. Look for white-tailed deer and turkeys in the fields surrounding the plant. Fairview Street and Church Road in Rush Township. Very shortly we'll dive into the woods once more, but only briefly, as we approach the hometown high bridge. Thank you. 
to be the scenic highlight of our trip, the Hometown High Bridge. The bridge in its current form is over 160 feet high and over 1,000 feet long. It is supported by eight riveted steel towers anchored by eight concrete piers. The Little Schuylkill River, now just a stream, will be directly below our train. To the left of the train, you'll see the Nyford Creek Dam. As we go over the bridge, feel free to take all the damn pictures you wish. <laughs> Hey, I just read them, folks. What can I tell you? <laughs> to give you a little history of the Hometown High Bridge, the first incarnation of the bridge was completed in 1870 when this line was first built. It was made entirely of wooden timbers. The threat of fire caused by the hot poles and sparks from steam locomotives was a constant problem. To safeguard against this, two watchmen were employed to inspect the bridge following the passage of every train. They lived in nearby company-owned homes and worked 12-hour shifts. In the event of a fire, wooden barrels filled with water, along with buckets, were placed on either side of the bridge approximately every 100 feet. It should be noted that in those early days, there were no side railings on the bridge. However, the wooden structure was built in such a way that any piece of timber could be removed and repaired without having to stop train traffic from crossing the bridge. In 1896, the wooden bridge was replaced by a steel structure, and in 1931, the Phoenix Bridge Company rebuilt the bridge into its current form. It was originally intended to be a double-track bridge to carry a planned main line running between New York and Chicago. During World War I, owing perhaps to its strategic location, the bridge was guarded by soldiers against trespassers and intruders. During World War II, security guards provided by the railroad watched the bridge around the clock. The last time the bridge was guarded in such a manner was during the 1948 presidential campaign of Harry S. Truman. Truman traveled over 30,000 miles across 28 states, giving over 350 speeches from the platform of his private rail car, the Ferdinand Magellan. The famous news photo of Mr. Truman holding up the November 3rd, 1948 Chicago Tribune article erroneously proclaiming Dewey defeats Truman, was taken from the platform of the Ferdinand Magellan at St. Louis Union Station. What do you think of that bridge? Yeah. Oh, last time they last time they stopped and blew the whistle. Last year, they stopped. The center of that bridge. The bridge blew a whistle. Yeah. Yeah. What they might do is they might do it this year on the way back.
inbound loads of plastic pellets, such as those in the hopper cars sitting outside. They manufacture everyday items, such as plastic utensils and trash bags. Just east of this location is another location known as Fredrickson. It is here where we meet our outbound morning hometown hybrid train. Now, this is one of the other trains that I alluded to earlier, operating out of Jim Thorpe today. Now, folks, this hybrid train also has an afternoon run, but... If you find yourself on it, you will be waving bye-bye to us later today as we sail past you along the line on our way back to Port Clinton and Reading. Yeah. Um, I saw him on the switch. 
Springfed Lake was originally built in 1883 as the Hotto Dam. It is now privately owned and used by boaters and fishermen. The Hotto Estates, a private lakeside resort community, can be seen in the distance. Two lakes together? Two lakes are together. Two lakes together. Two lakes together. 
How are they connected? seen Tippet Swamp, which was formed by water spilling over the auto dam. Wouldn't you love to have a swamp named after
On the left is the Amatec Westchester Plastics Division plant. This plant was opened in 1975 and is the nation's leading independent compounder of engineering resins, alloys, and other thermoplastic materials. founded in 1830 by the Lehigh Cola Navigation Company to provide housing for the employees mining anthracite at the nearby Rube Run Mine. The tracks pass directly through this residential neighborhood. Oh, 
Esquahoning, we pass under Route 93, which begins just south of our location at a junction with Route 209. Route 93 climbs up and over Broad Mountain and runs up to Hazleton, becoming the main thoroughfare in the city. Thank you. 
Now, folks, we are approaching Nesquehoning Junction and the final two miles of our trip. This will be your final call to use the restrooms on board the train. Also, we suggest that you begin to gather any belongings that you may need to take with you while in Jim Fork. The train will not be accessible to passengers during our layover in town, and all passengers must get off the train. We must get our train unloaded safely, but also efficiently, so that we do not interfere with the schedules of the other passenger trains that are operating today out of Jim Thorpe. <laughs> I realize how much they can listen to so many 
Scenic Railway train. Now this is the one other train that you do have a chance to ride if you wish. It operates every hour out of the Jim Thorpe Station and travels into the Lehigh Gorge State Park. You'll be able to ride the 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock train into the Lehigh Gorge, but not the 3 o'clock. If you ride the 3 o'clock Lehigh Gorge train, you will miss the return trip back to Port Clinton and Reading. Tickets are available at the booth located at the west end of the station platform. You look out across the river, you can see the Lehigh Gorge Scenic Railway train now. Now that's operating on a line that's a continuation of our main line. Incidentally, for those who might be curious, the other train that uh, is in Jim Thorpe today consists of two of our self-propelled rail diesel cars, or RDCs. The RDC train came from Pottsville in Schuylkill Haven. When we arrive in Jim Thorpe, you should be able to see the RDCs on the right. At Nesquahoning Junction, you might spot the abandoned PQ Tower on the left of one-time control train movements here until April of 1972. The hiking and biking trail to your left was added a few years ago to link the trail in the Lehigh Gorge to Jim Thorpe. This trail is a portion of the 165-mile Delaware and Lehigh National Heritage Corridor. If you were to ride one of our popular bike trains, this is the same path you would glide down for the 25-mile return trip from Whitehaven to Jim Thorpe. <laughs>
This is the location of the Jim Thorpe Rail Yard. The original engine house was torn down in 1945 to make room for the large turntable. This turntable on the right is operational and will be used to turn the 425 for the return trip this afternoon. Deeper into the yard, we pass under Pennsylvania Route 903. Jim Thorpe's memorial is located on Route 903 at the end of town. Route 903 heads toward Blakesley, deep in the Poconos. Jim Thorpe is on the southwestern tip of the Pocono region, which includes Carbon, Monroe, Pike, and Wayne counties. Millions of people visit the Poconos each year to participate in outdoor activities, stay at one of the dozens of resorts, or take sightseeing trips. Now, ladies and gentlemen, before we pull into the station and detrain, please remember that our train will return to the platform immediately following the departure of the 3 o'clock Lehigh Gorge Scenic Railway train. We will open for boarding at approximately 3.05 and will depart at 3.30 p.m. sharp. Please remember your coach number as you will have the same seat for the return trip. Therefore, if your coach number is 301, simply remember 301 at 305. Please keep in mind that other than the locomotives, power car and private cars changing ends, the coaches will be in the same order for the return trip. Therefore, those of you in coach 308 are the last to arrive in Jim Thorpe, but will be the first coach leaving this afternoon. Also, the train will not be accessible while we are in town. Therefore, please take anything you may need along with you. You may, of course, leave anything you wish on the train, and no one will bother it. And one other important point of order on that note, your car host will be turning the seats during our layover in Jim Thorpe. To facilitate this, we ask that you kindly place anything you are leaving on the train in the racks overhead. Also remember to carry your ticket stubs with you, as you will be required to present them to your car attendant prior to reboarding the train. Again, we open for boarding at 3.05 and will depart promptly at 3.30. Please be on time and make sure you board the red train. The other trains operating in Jim Thorpe today are not going anywhere close to Port Clinton or Reading, and to say the least, it is a long walk back. Now, ladies and gentlemen, as soon as Conductor Hafner has the train properly spotted in the station, he will give the okay to your car attendants to detrain you. Please exit the train only where you see a uniformed car attendant in the step box. Please follow their instructions, such as take your time, watch your step, hold on to the yellow handrails, and look down as you exit. We do not want anyone getting hurt. We'll see you back here on the red train at 3.05 p.m. For now, Rusky M. So long. Yeah. Yeah, I accidentally just under the car. Uh, we came up, uh, 